So I'm going to make uh, that guessing game from scratch here, uh, just to go through all of the different things that we have found or discovered over the last little time. And I'm doing it right from the very beginning just to make sure we get uh, all of the little details right. So the first thing you'll notice is I'm going to a drive where um, I can actually see the drive letter. I'm not going to my documents folder. I think you will know that now, but um, there's no harm in saying. And uh, I'm going to call this Flask Video Demo. And I've chosen a blank Flask web project and it should give me what I want. I forget which button you click, but I think you've all sorted that out by now. So we've got our blank template, uh, so our blank application. Um, what I'm choosing to do these days is rather than go and create the folder in File Explorer, I make the folder here. Uh, so if I say create add, sorry, new folder call it templates and the same with the files that i'm going to use so i'm going to go into my templates folder and add a new item which is going to be an html page which i'm going to call why not um guess.html so i've got guess.html and the good news there of course is giving me the valid markup to begin with um, I am going to have something super simple here I'm going to have a form um, with method equal to post and what did I stuff up there stuff up my speech marks in there method equals post kind of annoying that I did that if I do this it also does my indentation nice and neatly for me. We definitely want that. So input um, name equals guess. So the idea is going to have the guessing game and it will, I will type in my, I keep stuffing up my speech box, don't I? Autocomplete is great when you're getting it right. It's annoying when you're getting it wrong. Uh, so the user will type in their guess into a, a field and click the submit button. So input uh, type equals submit. If I was a touch typist, of course, I wouldn't have these problems. I recommend learning to touch type. Uh, so, and I'm also going to put down here a paragraph with uh, the I'm going to just pass a message to it. So I think that's about as simple as I can make the interface. Um, so I've thought beforehand that I want to have a field where I can, the user can type in their guess, their number, a submit button, and something to do a response. So back into the application then. I've got uh, this app root slash, that's fine. And def hello, let's call it uh, guess, just so it's well named. I know we're pretty much always going to have these same imports here. So let's get into the habit of doing these correctly. We, we're always going to have a render template. And we're always going to have a request. And there'll be possibly others in time. Uh, we're also going to need another import of random because we're doing this guessing game. So Let's go down here, remove our comment, and let's start writing a guessing game. Um, I'm going to firstly check if the uh, form has been submitted. Uh, so if request.method, I think it is. So the first time through, we won't get here. That uh, doesn't equals equals, isn't it? Yeah. The first time through, we won't get here because um, the form submit button has not been clicked. All we've done is just load that page. Um, so this is where we can actually start writing some things. Now I'm going to start using some variable names that are not defined yet, but we'll 
cross that bridge in a moment. So the variables that I'm going to have are going to be um, the computer number that it's chosen, the random computer number, and also I'm going to have a counter variable. So um, I'm going to say, let's get the form. Form equals request dot form. And from my form object, I can get what the user typed in. User guest equals form. And the, I named it guest, didn't I? In, the, uh, in this file here, it's called guest. So, yeah. so user guest, and I can say if uh, comp num equals user guest. Then that's great. We're going to pass the message. Message equals well done. You got it. Might just um, submit that to a different page because once we've got to this stage, we don't want the form anymore. That's just confusing. Uh, let's just think about what that might look like. I might just say at this point, let's go return render template. And instead of guest.html, render game over.html, which I haven't made yet, uh, but it's so quick to do it's not a problem, with message equal to message. Let's just go and do that, shall we? It's so quick to do. So add a new item, which is going to be an HTML file, and it's going to be called, what did I call it? Game over? Yeah game over and right here all I'm going to put for now is a paragraph that's going to go message done that was easy wasn't it? all right so game over HTML if they've got it right okay uh, then we're going to do an elif which will be if comp number is greater than user guess then we can say message equals uh, it's too low and we can finally do an else because there's nothing no other option less left so we can just say message equals to Hi, and then right at the end we're going to return render template uh, guess.html is that what I call it? Uh, message equals message. Who thinks that I've typed that all in correctly first time without any errors if I chance? Oh, we have got this issue with the computer number not actually existing yet. So this is a crucial thing that I've I want to talk about. Now, computer number obviously needs to be persistent. We can't have a, a new computer number chosen each time. So the right thing to do would seem to be that we're going to choose it up here. So it's much more of a global thing. So I can say computer num equals uh, random dot rand int and one to ten. I've had some trouble with this. Um, it doesn't seem to retain this as a global sometimes. Uh, I've had some real inconsistencies that I don't quite understand. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But there is a, a workaround. If we are having a global thing, which could be a variable, it could be an object, whatever, we can define it as being global. So I, here I can say global comp num. And I've, I've said that's a global now, done. And then I assign its value on this next line. And then when I get to the function, I have to say, if I'm going to use uh, comp num in this function, then it needs to be a global. It needs to be looking at the global that already exists. So we're all, always looking at the global. So while I'm here, I'm also going to have a global counter variable. And I'm going to set a value for that here. K 
counter starts at as being zero. And uh, I need to also have that there. All right, quick scan of the code. Does it look like it works? Let's hit the go button and see what happens, shall we? So we've got an error. That's useful because we actually need to know how to look up errors. It says local variable message reference before assignment. So clearly I didn't uh, down here. I've got a message too high, message to the message. Well done, you got it. But I didn't do something that exists if the form has not been submitted. So hopefully that will fix it. Um, oh, tell you what I forgot to do is put down here debug equals true. It means I won't always have to restart my web server. So what have I got? I've got a submit button. So if I say five, let's just check. Ah, I think here I forget. The usual stuff that we forget. Um, methods equals get. These are quite instructive errors because pretty much everyone in the class has made these errors at some point and um, you just need to be quick at recognizing those standard set of boring errors try again reload what did it say int and stra yeah see I, I don't i don't get things right first time we always put errors in so it doesn't like that because that's not because that's a string not an integer i'm just going to stop it and start it again let's see if this works I haven't done anything with the counter yet, have I? That's not quite written, but I've actually done a really bad example here of writing too much code before testing it. Five is too high. Let's try three. Oh, I'll get it right. Seems to be about right. Let's uh, go again. So if I say five, or a bit too high. Submit. Mm, I've got a feeling that it didn't reset that variable so if i restart it again and say five this time better not be three again too low seven i got it right just got time in this video to look at this counter thing so what i'm going to do is these two things if the method is post which means something's been submitted i can do counter plus equals one and down here i can ask um if counter we know we could only possibly have got here if um they didn't get it right so we can say if counter equals three i don't know if that's too many i might be out by one there i can say message equals you failed and i'm going to use this line here i think that would work so that i think is a fully working program let's try it so if i start with five too high i'm gonna go five again too high five again i failed i got three guesses and i didn't do it there's no loop in here of course this is event driven so the only event we've had is when someone clicks the button and then we just run it from top to bottom. So uh, you have to think in a different way to make your event driven programs work. Uh, I also haven't done um, this as object oriented yet. I thought that was perhaps taking it a step too far too early, but I'll do a second video on that quite soon.